homeland of the Sikh people and faith lies within the fertile river valleys of the Punjab region of northern India and Pakistan. For thousands of years, the Punjab has been the battleground of kingdoms and empires. The Sikh faith was established in the later 15th century by Guru Nanak. He was the first of ten Sikh gurus who were spiritual leaders during the religion's formation and rapid growth. Beginning in the early 16th century, the Punjab, as well as most of the Indian subcontinent, was conquered by the Mughal Empire. Mughal emperors claimed descent from Tamerlane, as well as Genghis Khan, and inherited their ability for conquest on a massive scale. For many years, the Muslim Mughals were largely tolerant of India's numerous religions. In 1567, the Emperor Akbar joined the Sikhs for a meal at a community kitchen called Alangar, where a free meal is served to all visitors, regardless of religion, caste, gender, or ethnicity. Afterwards, Akbar met with a third Sikh guru, who he had a very favorable impression of. As the Sikh faith continued to grow, later Mughal emperors viewed the gurus as a potential political threat. After the fifth guru was executed for not following the emperor's orders, the Sikhs began to arm themselves. Numerous battles were fought between the Sikhs and local Mughal governors in the Punjab who sought to disarm them. Tension subsided as the Mughals became embroiled in internal dynastic conflict. Until again, in 1675, the ninth guru was executed for not following the orders of the Mughal emperor Aurangzeb. The slain guru's son succeeded him. Gobind Singh, the tenth Sikh guru, further militarized his followers, forming the Khalsa warrior community. Upon being initiated into the Khalsa, the name Singh, meaning lion, was adopted as a family name by all male warriors. Gobind Singh continued the struggle against the Mughals and at times took refuge in the forests and mountains northeast of the Punjab. Aurangzeb brought the Mughal Empire to its maximum territorial extent, but its vast armies were diminished and his treasury depleted by the time of his death in 1707. As Gobind Singh traveled to make peace with Aurangzeb's successor, he was assassinated. Before passing away, he ordered that the Sikh holy scriptures, the Guru Granth Sahib, would succeed him as the final eternal living guru. During the following years, the Sikh Khalsa armies, under the leadership of General Banda Singh Bahadur, carved out a short-lived state in the Punjab. The hereditary aristocracy of the Punjab was abolished, and property ownership was granted to anyone who tilled the soil. After a siege, Banda Singh Bahadur was captured, tortured, and executed by the Mughals. The Punjab was reconquered, and many Sikh soldiers and civilians were massacred. Surviving Sikhs again fled to the forests and the mountains, and waged a guerrilla war against the Mughals. By the early 1730s, the exhausted Mughals made peace with the Sikhs and allowed them to return to settle their land and a degree of self-rule. In 1738, the weakened Mughal Empire's capital city of Delhi was ravaged, sacked, and plundered of its great wealth by the Iranian Afsharid dynasty of Nader Shah. Shortly after the Marathas subjugated the remnant of the Mughal Empire as its vassal, the Punjab was overrun by the Afghan armies of Ahmed Shah Durrani who defeated the Marathas while suffering massive casualties at the Third Battle of Panipat. Despite repeated invasions and massacres of Sikh civilians in the later half of the 18th century, the Afghans were never able to fully subdue the Sikhs. Since the death of Banda Singh Bahadur, the Sikhs were organized in a loose confederation of sovereign communities ruled by the Khalsa Fraternity of Sikh Warriors. After gaining control of the eastern Punjab, these small states began fighting against each other whenever not threatened by the Afghans, until they were all united by the 20-year-old warlord, Ranjit Singh. In 1801, he was crowned Maharaja of the Sikh Empire. He repeatedly defeated the Afghans in major battles, driving their armies out of the Indian subcontinent as far as the mouth of the Khyber Pass. During his 38-year-long reign, Sikh control expanded over the entire Punjab, and to the north and south. The empire was prosperous and internally peaceful. His inclusive reformed government and military included Sikhs, Hindus, Muslims, European military experts, and soldiers of fortune. The army was rigorously trained and modernized, especially in the use of artillery. The Sikh empire only lasted for 10 more years after Ranjit Singh's death. He had maintained peace with the British East India Company, while it had conquered the Hindu Maratha Confederacy to the south. The next three Sikh Maharajas that succeeded Ranjit Singh were all assassinated. The empire was thrown in a turmoil 
as the next Maharaja was a young child. The Sikh army doubled in size and assumed much of the practical control of the empire. A British observer at the time described the empire as being ruled by a dangerous military democracy. Taking advantage of this internal instability, the British East India Company began amassing troops on the Sikh border. War broke out, with both sides accusing the other of the first hostile actions. After several costly battles, peace was negotiated, where the northern territories of Jammu and Kashmir were ceded to the British, as well as valuable territory in the eastern Punjab. Tensions remained high, and a second Anglo-Sikh war broke out only two years later. During the Sikh wars, both sides gained a mutual respect for each other's fighting prowess, by the end of which, the British East India Company had annexed the Sikh Empire. During the following company and British colonial rule in India, Sikhs were both feared and respected for their martial ability. Despite only accounting for approximately 2% of India's population, hundreds of thousands of Sikhs served in the army during the British Raj. Sikhs were noted for their loyalty, skill, and bravery, particularly during the First and Second World Wars. After overcoming centuries of adversity, today there are over 27 million Sikhs worldwide, with the majority still living in the Punjab. This has been Epimetheus. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And hit the bell icon to get notifications every time I make a new video like this.